Cheering at pro wrestling shows in Japan is back, and 2023 is already shaping up to be a big year in the history of pro res. That's why you should listen to the Emerald Flow Show. From the Royal Road to the Green Mat, Paul and Gerard take you into the world of All Japan Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Noah. Not only do we analyze events, but we examine business, who is getting over, what angles are working, or not. Occasionally, we take a look at other Japanese promotions like DDT and Zero One. So if you're looking for more coverage of the world of Japanese wrestling, check out the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, available on all of your favorite podcast apps. Hey kids, do you like wrestling? Well, we like wrestling too. We are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Myself and Chris Novembrino kind of doing a lazy river of wrestling criticism, going through the news and whatever happened in stateside television wrestling. And also, you know what? Sometimes we just like to watch old stuff and talk about that too. Love for you to give us a listen. If you haven't already, we are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Welcome to Jumping Bomb Audio. Welcome back to Jumping Bomb Audio, the number one show all about the world of Joshi Pro Wrestling. My name is Taylor, and I am joined as always by my good friend and co-host, Kelly. Kelly, what's up? Not much. Not much. Uh, just thinking about how ever since Zencaster put their uh, time limit on it, it just makes the show feel like, like we're in a game show, like we have an obstacle course to complete. We are under pressure to deliver our very smart and reasoned opinions in record time. Uh, now that we, now that Zencaster, our podcast platform, has put time limits on our ability to record. So with that being said, why don't we get right into it? Yeah. But I'm before... going to swim through this big swimming pool of whipped cream and go over to Mark Summers and hit him with a pie. Oh, I had no idea what you were talking about. I was, <laughs> like, I was like, hmm, what's this? But now I understand. You said Mark <laughs> Summers, and then I I was not with you, and then I was with you. <laughs> I was like, what? Have we talked about this before? No. Um, Mark Summers, who supposedly, I believe, is like a germa big germaphobe or something. Yes, yes. Um, he talked about that in his interview on uh, Mark Maron's podcast. Yeah, or doesn't like mess... And yeah, he's got uh he's OCD like um like he's got the Howie Mandel kind where he just doesn't want to touch people and stuff like that. What was your favorite obstacle on uh Double Dare? I liked when they had to reach in the giant nose and try oh and my find God. I was going to say that. <laughs> it's so cool. Like it's just the that the construction of that piece is really nice. Like it looks really good. Um they also had the ant hill one, I think. There's something about an anthill coming back to me where they had to like, you know, when, not an anthill, but like a, like a kid's ant farm. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Like in the, in the, I don't know what you call that, um, the little box and you could see the little yeah that the ants would make. And I feel like they had a one that was that. Yeah, they did. I completely forgot about that. Um, but the nose is really the thing that, um, that was the one that immediately came to mind was that a show that people won on or was that one of those nickelodeon shows where no one ever won i think they won yeah they, they got to go to space camp oh that's right in alabama <laughs> uh, right i think so yeah it was alabama or florida one of the two because no they recorded the show in florida so yeah i think it yeah. was alabama you know i always thought oh i would love to go to space camp but not that thing where they um 
where you get in and they like flip you all around. Like yeah, no thanks. Ball. I was always like, I could never go to space camp because I would get on that and it would be over for me. Yeah, just let me chill out and eat the ice cream and I'm good. Yeah, the uh, hard. Yeah, the freeze dry. Dehydrated, dehydrated yes. ice cream. That's the word I was thinking. But anyway, now that we've talked about how we're under pressure to record and now <laughs> we've started the episode wandering off into some direction, here's the plugs. Uh, follow us on Twitter at JBomb Audio. You can follow Kelly at Comic Geek Kelly. And you can follow me at Tay Mambo on Twitter. Tweet at us and tell us your favorite Double Dare obstacle. If you were a big fan, as a child, or I don't, I don't know, maybe as an adult, uh, many years ago, I don't know. Uh, subscribe to this podcast on your podcast app of choice, and if that app of choice happens to be Apple Podcasts, we would love a five star rating and review. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can donate to the show at RedCircle.com/shows/jumping. Dash bomb dash audio. So we are going to dive right in. We are going to talk about Tokyo Joshi's Stick Out Korokan Hall show, which just happened mere hours ago. Yep. We're also going to talk some New Blood number nine. We're talking some GCW on this episode and much, much more. So let's get into it. Tokyo Joshi Stick Out 23. From June 11th at Corican Hall in front of 604 fans, a surprising number, because when I went to get the information off Cage Match today, I thought the number was going to be much lower. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like a very packed really show. Full. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't really a sort of stacked card, and then the maybe, well, the biggest match on the show. Um had to be changed with one of the big stars of the company. Yeah, this wasn't well, going to be a good show for walk-ups. Yeah. Um, but 604 is pretty in line with what they usually do, I feel like. I feel like they do 6, 7, 800. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like if a show that draws 600 people headlined by Yuki Aino and Arisa Endo, you can't look at that as any other, anything else than a success. <laughs> yes. Very true, very true. But what did you think about the show um, in ring wise? I thought it was really good. Nothing like it wasn't again. You aren't going to get a match of the year contender on this one, but like the top of the card definitely delivered, and the bottom of the card was solid as always. It was a show that really flew by for me. It felt very yeah. fast. Um, and I think I was a show I went in with low expectations and it definitely surpassed those expectations i thought it was a good um very good show sort of for what i expected maybe not the best um tokyo joshi or tokyo joshi korokan hall show but very solid uh and a lot to talk about so we will kick it off with the first match the regular duo of free wi-fi hikari noah and now kakuda defeated Runa Okubo, Okubo and Toga in seven minutes and four seconds. I think the highlight of this match was the strike exchanges between Hikari Noah and Toga. Toga definitely has carved her place out as the striker of the rookies. It's also very funny because... Um, because it was seven minutes and four seconds. If you would have asked me how long this match was, I would have told you four minutes long. It felt <laughs> very fast in that I was writing notes. I sort of wrote the notes about the strike exchange, and I was like, okay, great. Uh, ready to write some more notes. And then the match was over. <laughs> and I was like, oh, um, a decisive win for free Wi-Fi is hopefully they move up to maybe now that the – Titles are vacant, maybe to a title shot or a title win. Who's I'd be fine say? with that. Yeah, oh, I Kelly, missed you... this match. Okay. But the I, I did see the uh, clip of 
Toga just flooring Hikari with a, with a uh, elbow strike. And it's very funny because we'll talk about this a little bit later as well, but this sort of uh, rookie class felt like at the beginning it was going to be something that developed sort of very slowly. And it was like, oh, they have time. There's plenty of people. But Toga that seems to be taking leaps every time she's in the ring. She looks better and better to me. And there's someone else we'll talk about in a little bit who also looks very good um, in a surprising way that I figured for most of these, you know, Runa, Toga, and everyone else, I figured, okay, they'll sort of be at this level of like, let's hope they get through the match for Mm -hmm. a while. And it seems like the ones, you know, maybe Runa is still at that level, sort of in a timid, like, okay, I'm still learning the ropes. But Toga seems to be gaining the confidence every time she wrestles, which is uh, great to see. Yeah, I mean, you had her st- almost shoot on uh, on Camille a couple of weeks ago, so who knows? The sky's the limit for that level of confidence. <laughs> the next match was a singles match. Palm Harajuku defeating Himawari in eight minutes and five seconds. Another match that I would have never guessed was eight minutes. Uh, after this match ended, I actually was in the Voices of Wrestling Discord um, talking a bit about the show. And I said, after this match, I said, is this whole show going to be about 45 minutes long? <laughs> it, I don't know what it was. I'm like, okay, that's 15 minutes worth of matches. That's pretty sizable. If you would have asked me how long these two matches went combined, the opener and this one, I would have said seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. This one definitely why. did not feel that long. It just felt very short to me. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a lot of fun, uh, really liked, uh, really liked Palm, liked the comedy, liked Palm tripping um, on the ring mats before <laughs> tripping on Himawari, who was trying to trip her. Um, but other than that, not too much here, really. Yeah, no, these, it was as fun as you would expect it to be. Uh, these two, if you pair them up forever, they'll be like the Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck of Tokyo Joshi. <laughs> The next match was a six-person tag team match. The trio of Kaya Toribami, Waka Uihara, and Yuki Kamafuku defeating Raku, Shino, Suzuki, and Yuki Arai in nine minutes and 51 seconds. And my biggest note from this match was Shino. She know how to <laughs> take know. the Famouser. Yes. <laughs> now it's like the Famouser. I'm like the most dangerous, not the most dangerous move, but I'm like <laughs> the famous or what's going to happen? <laughs> like, will it be someone else who's not going to take it? Um, yeah. What if they just make that a running thing where all the rookies refuse to take the famous or for whatever reason? <laughs> but she know took it like a champion, uh, took the pin. I thought Yuki uh, Kamafuku looked really good in this match. I thought she was sort of the highlight uh, she had a good kick exchange with Yuki Arai, and she hit that drop kick on Shino, which I thought looked really good. And then, yeah, of course, she murdered her with her. that. <laughs> um, but I thought she was sort of the highlight of this match, Kaya Toribami's second anniversary of her debut. Oh, and I'm sort of interested. Uh, we'll talk about more about Kaya in a second, but I'm sort of interested where she goes from here, sort of in this match with, you know, obviously Yuki Arai, but sort of more lower card people, you know, Wakana, the rookie or semi-rookie on her team, Raku, who's sort of lower, and Shino, of course, is another rookie. But I don't know, sort of interesting. I think she's very talented, but, you know, maybe they're waiting it's going to be sort of interesting to see how the top of the card sort of plays out, mm-hmm. I think, in seeing where some of these people are going to slot in now that Yuka is leaving um, and Ito and uh, Miyu are going abroad more often, which also Mizuki will be um, in Deadlock Pro, or was supposed to be, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it, she was supposed to be 
teaming with Yuka. Yeah, it's for um, their tag tournament, so I don't know what they'll do there. I don't know what, but also maybe Mizuki starts going abroad. Um, so it could be that there are spots at the top of the card, and there are some people who you figure will probably fill that, like Miu, but now that sort of mid and upper mid card might be open and will be interesting to see do they think Kaya Toribami is someone who can move up or do they see her as sort of this opener comedy match staple yeah I hope they do something with her uh the really the only thing of note that I've had in my notes from this match was something that hit me on the walk to the ring when they decide to push Raku, like if if she steps up and gets gets some kind of push, her finisher needs to be the go to sleep. Can she lift people? I don't know, but she's. <laughs> I, I think she should. <laughs> Can she I, lift people and then dead press them over her head? I I hope. I mean, that's I, the other. You know thing. what? I want to see her do it. Yeah, and Water. you know when would the the best time to break it out? When no one would ever see it coming, at some point she does a she brings back her classic tag team with Aja Kong, and then turns heel on her and hits the go to sleep on Aja Kong, because no one would physically believe that she could do it. No one would believe in any way that she would do, <laughs> that she would do that. But that's when then she rips off the the dress revealing new gear and we discover, oh, she's just fucking shredded under there. Just muscles on muscles. Uh okay. <laughs> so that's that's my new fantasy booking. Uh that's what's gonna happen. Give it like a uh, two years, that's what I'm saying. In two years time that'll happen. I'm trying to think of something in Tokyo Joshi less likely to happen than that, and I'm <laughs> struggling to figure to find something. <laughs> what would be less likely to happen? In t- the thing less likely to happen would be, um, God, I guess I could think of a lot of things. <laughs> Mizuki comes to the ring. She says, uh, n- no one can challenge me <laughs> here in Tokyo Joshi. I want a challenge. Whoever's out there, come out and challenge me. And who comes out? John Cena. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's, I believe, one of the very few things less likely to happen than <laughs> Raku A, turning heel, B, hitting the go to sleep on Aja Kong, <laughs> C, ripping her dress off to reveal another outfit that reveals she's very ripped. That's the most likely part of it. Because, <laughs> um, like, Palm Hair Juku, I believe, before she wrestled, was an MMA fighter. Wait, for real? I think so. Am I making that up? I don't know, but that sounds amazing. Um... I feel like before she debuted, the whole thing was like, oh, she's done MMA. But am I? And everyone's just picturing like a shooter and then she's like, nope, I'm three. Um, I don't know. It's going to be hard to find, but I feel like. (laughs) I feel like I remember reading that somewhere or maybe I'm confusing it with someone else. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Palm should just make a guest appearance on Gleet MMA and just wreck someone. Because I remember when she debuted, I was like, oh, great, an MMA fighter. And then her character is like (laughs) ultimate weirdo. Uh, (laughs) Introductions. Um, I don't know. I think I might be. I don't know. Maybe I'm just totally wrong. Maybe you're from the universe where she was an MMA fighter. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, God. I Enter the Palm Harajuku verse. I, I Berenstein bared myself <laughs> into a major thought that Palm Harajuku was an MMA fighter. Now, when I say fighter, I believe she had like one match. Not that she was, you know, going out there and like smoking people. Main eventing Ryzen. <laughs> that she was. Um, Taking on one of the great took King of Prank Pancrase from Hikaru Sato. <laughs> um, but anyway, Raku being ripped, that would be the least surprising thing. 
I guess the second least surprising thing would be Raku turning heel, I guess. Um, and I think the least likely thing would be Raku lifting Aja Kong up onto her shoulders. Because <laughs> you could do I don't, her... I don't think <laughs> anyone in the company... Here's the people in the company I think could get Aja Kong on their shoulders. <laughs> Miyu Watanabe. Yep. Miyu Yamashita. May, probably and that's an if and that's an yeah. if iffy yeah. uh-huh. and i think that's it yuka might be able to do it yuka's deceivingly strong and when her when oh, her neck's so not small. fucked she's so <laughs> small that's true well you don't really think about it because they're all relatively the same size but all these people are like four foot ten yeah that's true <laughs> so just in principle like um through the laws of physics it feels like it wouldn't work having nothing to do with the you know is there anyone else no i don't think so like Ooh, I just Izanami, heel... but she doesn't really count no she's not really a full roster member but i just thought of a bit that heel raku could do where like remember when cody rhodes had the face mask thing and he had his security guards that would come out and put paper bags on people's heads what she was could do WWE? yes oh nope don't remember okay. it. that was actually a really that was that was actually a good bit but what uh what she could do is have security guards to come to the ring with her and if she sees a child in the audience she makes the security guards give the kid like a blanket and a pillow and makes him go to bed as a heel yeah you don't want to get sent to bed you want to watch the wrestling show oh, i guess that's true as a child <laughs> that does seem uh, as an adult you're like, like fuck yeah let's go to yeah, bed i was like that sounds great to me what are you talking about <laughs> what heel that's not a heel thing <laughs> the ultimate baby face giving me a free pillow and a blanket <laughs> uh yeah go to sleep oh if you insist okay <laughs> oh uh, thank you uh but anyway um good match yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, right after this match, it was announced that Saki Sama and Mei San Michelle will be making their return next month at Tokyo Joshi's big show. Hell yeah. Always good to know that Saki Sama will never leave us. Yep. Um, she'll always be around. They will be taking on the tag team of Yuki Arai and Wakana Uihara. Um, so interesting there. Interesting. Maybe I just have a gut feeling. Maybe we'll get some plot development with Neo Bishiki Goon. Yeah. Don't know what makes me say that, but just a thought. I mean it's it's been a while since we've saw him. There's there's gotta be something going on. And they haven't really had a new member in a while. No, they haven't. They haven't I mean May Sam Michelle's the last new member and she joined what? Three years ago? Two something years like ago? that. Yeah. Um and then really it was Masao was the last new member. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the next match was a singles match. Hyper Masao defeating Mihiro Kiryu in 8 minutes and 53 seconds. This match, an unofficial, I'm calling it, an unofficial sequel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to the show of the year. Um, the Hyper Masao produced show was a show that happened it was dropped on Russell universe like two hours before we recorded our last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to use this moment of a hyper missile match to talk about the show in that I do think, you know, maybe in ring wise, it's not the greatest show ever, but I have a high belief it will appear on my show in the year top five. Yeah. And I thought it was great. It's the most memorable show of the year by far. I would say, <laughs> I mean, it really is the perfect encapsulation of sort of, if you don't like the DDT Tokyo Joshi style, you'll probably be like, this is horrible and I hate this. But if you buy in, it's like so good. Like this whole match, I remember I was watching the show, the video file was like two and a half hours long. And... The last match 
started like 45 minutes into the video file <laughs> and I messaged you Kelly yeah and I was like I think this How? video file's messed up <laughs> it says there's an hour and 45 minutes left of the show and it that's almost impossible <laughs> I'm like, they're going to have a tag team match and it's going to last an hour and 45 minutes. And then it was this whole thing about alternate universes, which I thought was really fun and cool. But then at the end, you had Mahiro's speech about, you know, her mother being sick and turning to wrestling and falling in love with wrestling while she was worried about her, you know, sick parent. And it was all like very emotional. It was As very well, it was much sort of like everything, everywhere, all at once, the wrestling match. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, I hope some of the alternate characters that we saw can uh, bust through the wall of time. Yes, to... I would love to see that version of Neo Bishikigun show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to see the Rika Tatsumi, uh, Ariso Endo, Yes. Um, as D- Dramatic DDT called it, the homage to 80s heel Joshi wrestlers. Yes, it was uh, so good. Coming out, but Endo's one of those people who it's like, you have to go out there, you're playing a heel. You, you, you're very serious. She comes out, she's like all smiles. <laughs> uh-huh. She's like, I'm having a great time. <laughs> and then she's like, wham, wham, wham with the with the cane. Um <laughs> But a lot of fun. I really like the uh, Hyper Masao 2 auditions. Yes. As well. <laughs> that was good. The and Nakajima match with Which Yosh- was a Yoshihiko legitimate was great. Like four star match. Thought it was great. <laughs> so already before the main event, I was like, this show is a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's only been 45 minutes and it's going to be over in 15 minutes. Um, and then it wasn't. But very good. This one, a sequel. I say because Hyper Miss House started the match talking about how she was upset that Mahiro was getting all of the talk online after her own Purdue show and not herself. Uh, Probably the highlight of this match was Masao dropping Kiryu on the apron. That was sick. Like the, the really outside of the opening bit, this was pretty much just a straightforward hard hitting match. Yeah, and I think Mahiro is getting a lot better. She's really yeah. growing. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone, longtime listeners, that I determined <laughs> that Mahiro was good. Many months ago, I made the official decision, and I am being proved more and more correct every week. Yeah. Yeah, no, this uh, rocked. I was, a, I was a big fan of this match. And if you haven't gone back to Hype, Make watch it, especially if you liked Chikara at its peak, because it very much reminded me of old good Chikara. Yeah, that's a good um, lot of Chikara talk the past week and a half. Yeah, um, I mean, I've, it's but the, yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, yeah, it it felt like a tribute to that kind of stuff. I mean, I of course I know it wasn't, but like it just felt like that. Um, but at, and at the end of the day, that show made Mahiro look great. And I thought yeah. this helped as well. Like you use the produce show, like a goofy produce show. And you've all of a sudden pushed someone who seems to ha- now have a lot of momentum, even though, mm-hmm. you know, she didn't win this match, but feels like someone who the fans are getting more behind. I feel more behind. Oh, for sure. So really cool. Yeah. And also Misao's a uh, new green leather jacket is so cool good jacket very hip in between uh, this match and the next match the entrance for the 10th tokyo princess cup were announced 16 entrants are as follows Mizuki, Rika Tatsumi, Miyu Yamashita, Shoko Nakajima, Miyu Watanabe, Hyper Masao Yuki Aino, Yuki Kamafuku, Naokakuda, Hikari Noah, Raku, Suzume, Arisa Endo, Yuki Arai, Moka Miyamoto, and Mahiro Kiryu. So pretty much 
Uh, a majority of the non-rookie roster, really the only people not included, uh, Palm Harajuku, not included, and then people like Torabami, Himawari, um, and sort of down from there. So really no surprises. I like the idea. I like it here. I like it in the five-star Grand Prix of... You know, it's just 16 people. It's very straightforward. They showed the bracket on the show. You know, there's none of this like, hey, this person gets a bye to the second round and then they do this. It's like 2v2 all the way to the finals. And it's a strong lineup. It's really the 16, I would say, probably the 16 best wrestlers in the company. Yeah. Yeah, no, the... And... Raku is the only one where I'd be like, ah, I don't know, but and, and you know maybe she's gonna turn heel and hit a go to sleep on someone. Who's to say? But who would you replace Raku with? Like, I guess you could replace her with Torabami. I would put in Torabami or Palm probably. But it it would also feel weird to put in Miyu Hikari and not put in Raku. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, she can work like an undercard tag with uh, Shino or something. Yeah, but so we don't know the, or at least I don't believe we know. They had numbers on the um, entrance spots. I don't know if that corresponds to the order in which they were announced. But Oh, I didn't even think Kelly, of that. Kelly, looking at the, I didn't think about it until I just started speaking the words. <laughs> um, so I don't blame you. Looking at the list of 16, who do you think emerges as the winner of the 10th Tokyo Princess Cup? I am going to go with a dark horse and say, coming off of the success of her produce show, I think Misao could get elevated to, to win this and possibly win the title. Interesting. I feel like the chalk pick is just doing Miyu and Miyu Watanabe. Okay, I yeah. Uh, yeah, me oh, Watanabe is definitely my close 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 number 2 pick. But it's pretty open. Um I don't know. So, you know, some of it may depend on who emerges from Summer Sun Princess as champion. Yeah which is sort of up in the air. So that is the Tokyo Princess Cup, which will begin starting in the middle of July. But after those announcements, we had another tag team match, Moka Miyamoto and Shoko Nakajima defeating Haru Kawashiro and Suzume in 13 minutes and 35 seconds. Um, I thought this match was a delight. That's what I have in my notes. What do yeah. you think, Kelly? I think this is Haru's best outing by far at this point. I thought she was really good here. And uh, yeah. my other thing with this match is you may remember last episode at when I had my uh, my little segment to tell people to go do something. I said, hey, go see uh, Shin Kamen Rider. Now, having seen that movie, I feel very confident in saying that Suzume was the visual inspiration for one of the characters in that movie. So, did you see my tweet about this? Uh, I don't think I did. All right, I'm going to send it to you so you can see. So, they are... The bad guys in this movie are all, like, augmented humans given with DNA of, like, various insects and stuff. One of them is the wasp augmented human. All of her gear, all of her suits has like the the hexagon uh, stuff on them. She has the double twin tails. Like it just, I thought it was Suzume at first when I saw her. <laughs> so I feel very confident in saying that she was the visual inspiration for that character. And I hope it just came from like Hideaki Anno wandering through wandering into a Tokyo Joshi show and being like, ah, there's my villain. Oh, interesting. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm looking. Um, it's a little bit more. Although I guess the sleeves. Yeah, I the sleeves the have sleeves the whole thing. <laughs> have the thing. I mean, yeah, and it is yellow, and it is B stuff. <laughs> B stuff. So the yeah, hair's like the that, same. I yeah, like that I, I, I feel very confident in saying that. <laughs> Susan May should get that helmet. She should. That helmet rocks. <laughs> um. She could do a whole feud with uh, Misao. They could do a whole Common Rider thing. That would be awesome. Oh, I'd be there down you for go. that. By the way, uh, uh, that movie rocks. Definitely worth watching when it gets some uh, digital or physical release here in the States. But I thought, speaking of Suzume, I thought she looked awesome as always. Yes. Um, she did that weird knee. Um, I don't know what to call it. Knee cross body off the rope. Move, yeah <laughs> where chris and balian and drew were all like what's happening <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a very str- a very interesting energy to the three-man booth yes um, especially because well. it seems like aki has not watched tokyo joshi since he last did commentary no, for him it seems like he has not watched anything and chris has now become like a major expert yes on the company and i think at one point um balian was like oh chris are you gonna tell me some more lore (laughs) or something i was like jesus uh uh, but that's the next match uh i agree with you i thought haru took a big step here i thought she looked really good um probably why she's higher up the card than her other compatriots Uh, because i thought she looked very solid took a big step compared to the sort of like runa was very sort of timid Mm -hmm. um yeah nowhere near as as much a baby giraffe as she was previously (laughs) but then i thought the finish was like crazy with mocha i don't know that this is what they were going for but Mocha had Haru in that submission. She's like reaching her arm out to tap. And Mocha's like, no, 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 you're not tapping out with your arms. And takes her (laughs) arms and like pulls them back in a way that's like, I want you to pass out (laughs) in this move. And I was like, damn. I was like, that's aggressive. I don't know if that was the point because then she ended up waving her arm anyway to tap out. Um but I just thought it was very interesting, very sort of, we're sort of starting to see this more. There was the, um, on the last cork and who was it that got the submission, like the rear naked choke. And well, like, Endo yanked. was trying with the, um, the camel clutch on the last one where it looked like Miu did tap, but then, you know, she fought through. Yeah. But I'm like, dang, I guess everyone's getting mean. And the- yeah, there's <laughs> a level of viciousness. <laughs> In this company that I am a big fan of now. <laughs> um, but I thought this was great. Great step up by Haru, uh, which I love to see. And I'm looking forward to see if she uh, takes some more steps in the future coming months. Yeah. The semi-main event was a handicap match two on one originally supposed to be a tag team match until yuka sakazaki had to pull out due to injury in that match the duo of miyu watanabe and rika tatsumi defeating mizuki in 17 minutes and eight seconds kelly what did you think of this match i thought this was great but like this is a uniquely mean match like okay so you're going to get beat up 2 on 1 by the team that you were supposed to face for the for your titles but couldn't because your partner got hurt and you had to give up the titles so you're not actually fighting for anything and also your hurt partner has to watch Like what the fuck <laughs> That's messed up guys I don't know man I Mr. Booker man you were being real mean to Mizuki but uh, she fought her she fought her a little hard out, couldn't overcome the odds. Uh, but damn, they made sure to give the people their money's worth uh, and gave them a really good match. I thought this was great. Uh, I went four stars on it. 
Yeah, I usually hate handicap matches just because I think they don't really make any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of you're like, okay, either one side wins, you know, two on one wins and you're like, of course you won. You were two on one or the one wins and you're like, oh, these two other people are nothing. Yeah, they could get beat by one person. But I thought this was really great. I thought they treated it seriously. Mizuki sort of held her own for as long as she could, and then she lost, which is sort of a logical story. It started out very un, a very unserious match, um, which I think sort of helped pad it a little bit so they weren't like, oh, we have to go right to the finish because it's a two-on-one with Rika helping Mizuki because, of course, the backstory, as Chris explained, part of the lore... Um, <laughs> that Rika loves Mizuki and wanted to help her out. Um, I did write in my notes, commentary was big dudes being bros energy. Oh yeah. They, they were, they were having a great time. They're just talking, you know, Chris is explaining this. Balian's like, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> um, and I, I was the same as you. I went four stars. I just thought it was really well worked. Um, really interesting you know, don't really see handicap matches in Tokyo Joshi. Did they do one with Max the Impaler? Yes. I think they did, yeah. Yeah, but that's sort of a different... That's a different thing. Handicap match. Um, And I just thought it was really well worked. I mean, maybe the three, you know, top workers, especially if you sort of take Yuka out now that she's leaving, you know, three of the top workers, I think, in the company, and they worked really well. Uh, good near falls kept up the pace so i was really shocked that i really liked it because i sort of went in thinking okay this is probably going to be some goofy thing um you know it's two on one i was like is mizuki gonna win even though it's two on one which i thought would be weird um but yeah just i just really enjoyed it yeah definite really good semi-man And the main event was the number one contenders match for the international princess title where Yuki Aeno defeated Ariso Endo in 14 minutes and 27 seconds. I thought this was another great match. I thought the finishing sequence was really good. I thought both of them worked really hard. Uh, It was a match that sort of surprised me, not that I thought that they were going to go and do poorly. And I know Endo's sort of been close to the top of the card at points but i thought it was really cool i know this probably wasn't through their own choice of doing this but really cool to just see two people who aren't really top of the card people come out work a match that's really good in the main event and be like whoa this is a lot of fun yeah it was uh you would never expect this to be the main event, but man, it they killed it. Like, and for a match that in the opening couple of minutes I wasn't entirely sold on, I was kind of starting to fade. Like, <laughs> I was getting sleepy and it just wasn't grabbing me. But once they got to like the outside and then just started beating the hell out of each other, this was great. And the closing moments of it were absolutely thrilling. Like, they were fantastic here. Endo in particular looked great and I was so disappointed to see her lose. And it was like, they definitely felt like they knew they had to go out there and deliver because it's like, look, this wasn't supposed to be the main event, but it is now. So they went on and made sure to put on a main event level match. I thought it was great. I went uh, four and a quarter on it. It was my match of the show. I mean, I would have to go back and look, I don't know off the top of my head, but probably the best Yuki Aino singles match that I've seen. I would say by far, yeah. I mean, I would have to go through and look. I know she's had some other title opportunities, uh, but nothing really sticks out to me as like, oh, I remember that was really good. Um, So happy to see that this sort of revamp of her outfit, at least, sort of revamp of her character has sort of unlocked this after she spent a lot of months just feeling like, oh, I'll just hang out in the mid-card and do nothing. And, you know, I love Endo. Would have been great to see her win. 
but I feel like she has been pushed in a way that I'm confident that she's sort of the person waiting on that cusp. They're sort of dealing with, you know, getting Miyu up there, getting, you know, establishing Mizuki now that she has the title. And I think Endo's going to be up there sooner rather than later, but just not right at the moment. Mm -hmm. She'll Uh, get there. Yeah. Like her, Suzume, I know they're in a tag together, but they just feel like people who are ready and it's just sort of waiting. I mean, the ultimate of that is Miyu Watanabe, who sort of feels like, okay, she is ready, but you just got to wait for the opportunity to plug her in, make sure you're not affecting other people. Um, but yeah, she's great and a great performance by, you know. Yeah, definitely. I would say it, I don't know if it's the best match of Endo's career so far, but it's my favorite Aino f- for sure. I think Endo's had, I would have to go back. I think she's had one or two four-star matches, maybe in tags and maybe a single, but I would have to go back and, and see. But a great match and a great cap to the show. Yes. Well, that is all for Tokyo Joshi's Stick Out 23. But before we continue, this episode is sponsored by BetStamp and is brought to you by the BetStamp app, which is helping thousands of people win at sports betting for free. The same way travelers use Google Flights or Expedia to find the best prices Bettors can now use BetStamp to do the same. When you place a bet, the odds given by a sports book will determine how much you can possibly win. Even when betting on the same outcome, different sports books will offer varying payouts, and these differences can be huge. Thankfully, BetStamp allows you to easily line shop for the most profitable odds across all sports books. You can click on any matchup and instantly see all the different odds for game lines, player props, and even futures bets. Line shopping is the simplest way to find an edge in sports betting and maximize your chances of winning long term. On average, bet stamp users win an extra $1,000 or more yearly just by line shopping. You can find the BetStamp app on the Apple iOS Store, Google Play Store, or through your browser at www.betstamp.app. To access all these benefits, sign up using promo code VOW and start your journey to successful sports betting today. If you forget to use the code VOW upon sign up, you can always enter the code in your BetStamp account afterwards check it out so also happening in the last two weeks was the ninth edition of stardom's new blood show we won't go in depth on this one but kelly i know you watched the show i did what do you think of it uh it was all right uh i it was, I don't know, I guess it was better than some of the more recent New Bloods. Still not great, in my opinion. Uh, the Sexy Dynamite Princess match is definitely just powered by Rossi Ogawa's id. It's just like, yes, this is what wrestling should be. Lots of, lots of, lots of Sexy Dynamite Princess in that match. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of just over these Nanae Takahashi passion injection matches. I don't really think they're any good anymore. <laughs> uh, what is it? Miyu, uh, Miyu Amasaki versus Izumi was pretty good. Uh, the tag title match was great. Like, was a legit great match. Uh, I went four stars on that one. So if you're going to watch anything on this show, just watch the New Blood tag title match. I thought it was very good. Uh, yeah, and the thought- main main was fine. I thought the tag title match was the easy highlight of the show. It was funny because I was sort of watching, especially in the opening matches. And I was sort of like, oh, the energy is low. You know, the attendance was 306 or something like that. 
So it's not like, oh, you've got a huge crowd. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, Stardom and Showcase seems to have died. Um, yeah, they haven't done that in a little bit. And I was just thinking maybe these New Blood shows also should die. <laughs> and then in the middle of the show, they announced more of them. And I was like, well, okay. Well, I guess that's not happening. But yeah, the tag really, I would say, skip everything on the show except for the tag title match. Really. Yeah. Though I, I am having the, I guess what I would call the Briscoes issue with the Anaba sisters, and I constantly forget which is which during the course of the match. You have that issue with you have that issue with the Briscoes in like two thousand six. Back you when had that issue with the Briscoes in two thousand and six. Well, sorry, two thousand seven. That's when I started watching Ring of Honor. Yeah, when they just looked like exactly like each other at that point. That they're ones I've never had. Um, I've never had an issue with. Really? I to, okay. I, I had to do the um, the little trick for the young bucks for a while. Okay. Of course, when they change their facial hair, the trick doesn't work anymore, and I forget which one is which. <laughs> um, which is Matt has when he used to have his big sideburns that he used to have. The trick was you would say Matt has hair matted to his face, <laughs> and Nick was clean shaven. So you would say, "Oh, Nick might have nicked himself shaving." <laughs> Uh, but when they both have beards, you can't do that. Yeah. And I forget which one is which. You can just go with Matt has the better hair. Because Nick is... Now, what does that mean? Well, I, you mean Nick's... more hair? Yeah, more hair. I mean, Nick's hair is... <laughs> he's Poor guy's got a receding hairline going pretty bad. And it's like... And he's the younger of the two. It's like, what the fuck? But yeah, no, Matt's definitely got the better head of hair. And so that, that's how I remember. Okay, interesting. Maybe I'll stare at their hair. Yeah. Uh, next next time I'm watching. Yeah. Or it's like the Usos. Who knows which one is which? I never do. I don't either, but I don't watch WWE, so that probably. I'm just trying uh, to think of like twin that. brothers. <laughs> oh, the Bellas. Oh yeah. I could I could tell the Bellas apart. Well, that got easier as the years went on. Correct. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> Stardom also had a Corrigan Hall show where they had a generational battle. The main event saw Julia, Mayu Iwatani, Suri, and Tom Nakano go to a 30-minute time limit draw with Micah, Saya, Kamatani, Utami, and Suzu Suzuki. Did you watch that? Uh, I have not seen that. You, it's, uh, watch it. It's fucking great. <laughs> even even you know, with it being a draw and knowing it was a draw going in it still rocks it doesn't feel like a draw at all because there's so many people in the match so they're just going balls to the wall the whole time just action go 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 from the very beginning and throughout the entire match uh i loved it i went four and a half stars on it i think this is a fantastic match and suzu has a lot of great spots in here uh the despicable Tom Nakano shows her true colors again by attacking Julia during the match. This is well, the person that people like. This is the person that isn't the top heel in the company. I don't I don't get it. Tell us how you really feel. Tom is oh. despicable. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. The, dis the despicable Tom. Ooh, I really thought I had made a mistake there. <laughs> <laughs> and you said the word Tom, and I was like, uh-oh. Uh, uh, Kelly's you know out here dropping C words was, on the show yeah, now. I was like, didn't know what you were going to be capable of um, in that moment. So I Swimming through it. a I, swimming pool of whipped cream to call Tom the C word. I just saw Time Limit drawn. you know me. I'm like, I'm out. I saw um, enough people talking this one up that I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And it is very, very good. All right. All right. Uh, what else is going on? Oz, or what else has gone on? I should say. Oz Academy had a show just a little bit ago. The main event, Mio Momono and Takumi Aroha took 
on Mayumi Ozaki and Sayori Ano. The Up Up Girls had a Purdue show on June 10th. Uh, in Sendai Girls, they just had a show on June 11th. Chihiro Hashimoto and you, Team 200 Kilogram, defeating Miyuki Takase and Mika Iwata to retain the tag titles. And Asuka defeated Manami for the world title. In Ice Ribbon, on the 4th, Hamako Hoshi and Makoto successfully retained their tag titles against Hikari Shimizu and Kaho Matsushita. And Totoro Satsuki defended the Ice Infinity title against Michiko Miyagi. Wave continues to move through their Catch the Wave tournament. The current standings in the five blocks. The young block currently led by Yura Suzuki, who has five points. Followed Honika has three, Himiko two, and Kazuna Tanaka and Chie Orzora both have one. In the Elizabeth block, Yuka Miyazaki and Mizuki Endo both have four. And everyone else in the block, Sakura Hirota, Kiori Yoniyama, and Cherry have two. In the A block of the official tournament, Asuka is running away with it. Six points. Next closest, Manami has two. Kohaku and Kurumi Hiragi have one. And Rina Amakura has no points. In the B block, Risa Sara with six, Saki with four, Miyuki Takase, Kakuru Sekiguchi, and Riko Kawahata all with two. And in the C block, everyone's got two. Hikari Shimizu, Itsuki Aoki, Haruka Umasaki, and Ayame Sasamura, except for Yuko Sakurai, who has not had any matches in the tournament yet, so she is technically at zero points kelly what has been going on in gato move and choco pro uh so gato move on the 29th had may saruga's fifth anniversary show uh the show opened with an exhibition match between may and the newest trainee nonoka who came off super well in this uh exhibition and has a shockingly strong submission game so I'm very interested to see how Nonoka grows as a performer because I was I was impressed by her. Uh, it also had Ryo Mizunami defeating Mia Yatsuba in a good actual passion injection match. I think Mizunami just destroys Nane's matches when it comes to that. Uh, they in non Joshi action on the show the Asia Dream tag titles changed hands. Uh, Chon Shiryu and Shin, Shin Suzuki defeated Chris Brooks and Masahiro Takanashi after Brooks' shoulder popped out. Uh, it was kind of gross. You could actually see it happen. <laughs> uh, and then in the main event, Meisuruga defeated Momoka Hanazono. Uh, the most shocking match uh, moment of the entire show was Momoka smashing her bubble machine over May's head and then flipping off the crowd. I was I was not prepared for that to happen. Uh, overall, very fun main event. Uh, I went three and three quarters on it. Uh, Choco Pro 313 on May 30th. The Best Bros ran a tag gauntlet against a bunch of teams for their collective birthday. That was very fun. The match against Sayaka and Mia Yatsuba definitely stood out the most to me in there. And then they followed that up with a singles match between May and Sayaka on Choco Pro 314. That was really good. And then yesterday on the 11th in Choco Pro 316, hell yeah, brother, uh, the Super Asia title was defended with Hagane Shino successfully defending it against Chia Koshikawa. I haven't seen that match yet, but I'm very excited to. Uh, we've got... So, Gleet. I got We got to talk about uh, Michiko Miyagi and what she's been up to. Because... She went to Ice Ribbon. She got exiled from Gleet. Uh, Unagi took over as like the the leader of the Gleet Joshi division. Miyagi went over to Ice Ribbon. She got that title shot. Uh, and she picked up a new friend in Aoi, or AOI. How, I, I've never been clear on what her name, how you pronounce her name. But on the, six, seven, on the uh, June 7th show, Miyagi returned with Aoi in her corner attacking Unagi and uh, Ho- Hosokawa after their match against uh, Itsuki Aoki and Raiden Hagane. Eventually, 
after as the beat down kept going, uh, Aoki and Hagane helped uh, the Gleet team and ran off Miyagi and Aoi. And this sets up a big tag match coming up on July 1st for Gleet with Unagi, Hosokawa, Aoki, and Hagane taking on the team of Miyagi, Aoi, Risa Sara, and Janai Kai in a very fire pro match. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know any of this information, so... Uh, okay, wow. Yeah, my notes I, mean, I had listed as where in the world is Michio Miyagi, <laughs> Michiko Miyagi. I mean, Janai Kai is very sort of gleet. Yeah, no, she'll fit. Tinged, yeah. Yeah, no, she'll definitely fit fit in there. Uh, wow. Um, also happening in the last two weeks, which we will touch on, was the GCW Tournament of Survival won by Rina Yamashita. Hell yeah. Kelly, I know you watched the show. I watched the show. It was on June 3rd. Mm-hmm. The show to me, sort of a vibes show, if you will. 100%. That is a show where I think I had one four-star match. I don't remember what it was at this point. But, man, just a fun show. And that's kind of just what a good deathmatch tournament is, for the most part. You're just It's just a bunch of cool matches. They don't really peak very high, super, super high, but like everything's good for the most part. And just, it was a fun show. If you like death matches, you'll probably like it. And if you don't, you won't. Yep, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty easy. Uh, the next night was the Cage of Survival 2, Rina Yamashita getting a title shot against Masha Slamovich for the GCW title because of winning Tournament of Survival. Now, Kelly, I think I didn't. I think I started the show and never finished it. Okay. Uh, Blake Christian got involved in the cage of survival. He had an automatic title shot um, and ended up winning the title, which I had heard about and was not interested in, which is mostly why I never finished the show. Yeah. Um, This match up until the stupid finish was great. Uh, Rena and Masha beat the shit out of each other. A lot of cool spots, a lot of dangerous stuff. Like they, they went for it. There was a, a really cool spot with, uh, they had like a bit of glass, like a, a bit of a cage hanging from the side of the ring at an angle. And there was a piece of glass on there and Rena put Masha on top of the glass and then splashed her through the glass onto the cage. And it looked awesome. Like a, a lot of cool stuff and a, a very good match that I was trending. If it had a clean finish, I was trending towards four and a quarter, four and a half. But then the finish came with Blake Christian and it just sucked all of the energy out of the room because Blake Christian sucks. He's not good. Like, and it's not just like, oh, he's a heel. I don't like him. It's like, no, dude fucking sucks. <laughs> Send his ass back to WWE. They can have him. I don't want him here. This is very disappointing. I'm hoping this story ends with Rena eventually beating Blake for the title because she's so over in GCW and the fans fucking love her there. And she, I, she should have won that match. There was one bit in the main event that is, I don't know if it was on purpose or if it was accidental brilliance from GCW's direction because Christian was hiding as a cameraman for I, seemingly, I guess the entire show. I don't know if he was, if it was or not. But the shot that they had of him running in was him putting down the camera onto the ring apron and then jumping into the ring. And like, I don't know if they just cut to that camera on because that's where they're cutting around, or if that was planned or not. But it looked great. Like it was a very cool thing to sh- to see. And it, it doesn't seem like something that GCW would actually plan on doing. And I think they might have just lucked into having that cool shot. <laughs> Um, I will say about Blake Christian, a, a very brief story, which is that I have a friend who I've been trying to get into wrestling who was like, oh, I might be interested in this. We went to an AEW um, Dynamite show, and then there was a GCW in our area, and I was like, well, we should go to GCW because like an independent show is very different than going to see AEW in an 8,000 seat venue or whatever yeah. it is. And we went, she loved it. She had a great time. 
the only person on the show she did not like was Blake Christian. <laughs> yeah. He's got a hateable face. Like, and it's just, ugh, don't like that. She dude. was like, oh, he was horrible. He was horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he sucks. Like, well, uh, he is a heel. So, uh, doing and he job, was only turned to heel because everyone disliked him. And they're like, well, I guess we should give them a reason to actually boo him. Uh, but that is our brief detour into the world of GCW. But what is coming up? Uh, over the next two weeks in Joshi on June 25th. The only show happening uh, on June 25th. Uh, Stardom Sunshine will be happening their next big show. That show Taylor, kicks that's off... not true. There's a June 25th show right down the, the thing. There's other shows. <laughs> Oz okay. is having one. <laughs> what other understand- show would there be? Kelly, do you understand I was doing I okay. I was making a joke. <laughs> I know I know what you're doing. But you would have immediately contradicted yourself. Forbidden, forbidden door is happening. There's no right shows there. outside of the land the, the country of Japan on the twenty fifth. Stardom wrestlers have nothing better they could be doing on June twenty fifth. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Jeez, I'm being noted over here. <laughs> uh Stardom Sunshine will kick off Hanan, Sai, Ida, and Momokogo will take on Waka, Tsukiyama, Yuna Mizumori, and Aya Sakura. Uh, Kelly, get ready. It's another passion injection match. Fucking cool. As Nanai Takahashi will take on uh, Kelly favorite, Hanako. Yeah, Hanako's good. Singles match. Am I out uh, of line to say that Nanai is washed? I mean, she is like 40 five years old 46 years old it's not like she's 32 yeah like i just don't think she's good anymore (laughs) i mean it also could be that she's like oh i'm in the mid card of all these shows and i'll just go out and do my regular stuff and that's all i need to do yeah yeah uh give her a title shot and then we'll you know then we'll see uh shuri will have a singles match with xena uh, this, I believe, will be Xena's final match. She is heading back to home, back home after this match. I don't know when, if she'll be coming back. Oh, no. Mina's losing another of her women? There's always more women. That's true. <laughs> that <Good>. sounds terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think that she's done well, so hopefully she will be back. Tom Nakano, Natsupoi, and Kairi will team up to take on Micah, Suzu, Suzuki, and Mei Sierra. Okay, so this is just a unit now, right? <laughs> I guess. They seem to be awfully uh, friendly. I mean, You can't make that same trio more than once and have them not be linked in some capacity at this point. Maybe we'll see on the show. Maybe. Mirai and Amisore will defend their Goddesses of Stardom titles against Mina Shirakawa and Mariah May. Oh, I hope they lose. Mina Julia. deserves something. <laughs> yeah, she really does. Falling down the ladder of title matches. <laughs> yeah, give her give her this belt at least. She's gonna get she's gonna get a future title shot any day now. Uh, <laughs> Julia, Tekla, and Mai Sakurai will take on Mayu Iwatani, Hazuki, and Koguma in an Artist of Stardom title match in a cage. So doing what they did last year at this time when they had the show in the cage, the top two in the cage, because the main event, Utami, Saya, Azumi, Lady C, Hina, and Miyu Amasaki will take on Natsuka Tora, Momo Watanabe, Starlight Kid, Saki Kashima, Ruaka, and Rina in an all-out war cage match, loser leaves unit match. Uh, very Dragon Gate here in that uh, they will battle. You have to get out of the cage, and the last person in the cage, remaining in the cage, uh, will need to leave their unit. Kelly, who do you think is getting kicked out 
It's got to be Utami or Saya, right? I'm thrown off by the fact that there's so many low card wrestlers in this. Yes. That it feels like a thing where it's like, of course, it's going to be Utami or Saya. But I'm like, are they just going to pull a weird thing where it's like, oh, Ruaka. Oh, no. Uh, you're out of what if all the tie. lower card wrestlers just make an agreement early on? And they're like, hey, what if we just all leave right now? Yeah, let's all get out. Let's, let's just all go. Let's go. Let's go get dinner. All the veterans are fighting and they're like, well, yeah. we don't really care about this. Stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would think that that's where they've been pointing, but I don't know. Because I don't know like, what you do with anyone from Wado Tai outside of <laughs> Wado Tai right now. But like if you end and you're like, oh, Lady C, you're out of Queen's <laughs> Quest. Like, uh. are people going to be like, okay. Yeah, because uh, Lady sure. C could just walk right over and be like, hey, Stars, can I t- join the team? And they're like, yeah, fucking who cares? <laughs> uh, so we will see. But I really very much enjoyed the cage match show last year. So hopefully this one will be uh, just as good. Yeah. Had a, had a five star match last year. So um, also happening. um. The only show happening on June 25th. <laughs> Aside from that stardom show. In Oz Academy. The Akino 25th anniversary event will be happening. Uh, Tokyo Joshi has some... Oh, man, no one from Oz can go over for Forbidden Door. I mean, I did propose last week. I said, why not just do, uh, like, Tony Storm versus Mayumi Ozaki? Yeah. Yeah, do a uh, fucking... The Outcasts versus Ozaki Goon. Do Fly uh, over police. Sayori Ano is um, not booked there on we the go. show. Bring her out in the Oz gear. Yeah. I mean, it is a forbidden door to Oz. No one from Oz. I mean, I guess if you count a car Ishida, but I don't really. But no one from Oz Academy has come over. That's a forbidden door. Yeah. Why not get uh, Miyuki Takase? There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot to say, but not on this type of podcast. Um, <laughs> just like, hey, if you dedicated two minutes an episode to hyping up, I don't know, Mika Iwata, and just bring her over for Forbidden Door, that would be fun. Yeah. But they're like, well, we have no time. We have to we have to learn what is gonna happen with Ethan Page in the service of Matt Hardy. We have, we have to, to lay Billy Graham to rest in the middle of this false count anywhere match. <laughs> we don't have time for anything possibly else. <laughs> we have the entire Tokyo Joshi roster to choose from. None of them will be coming over. Just do, like, you don't think if Miyu Watanabe showed up unannounced and everyone's like, I don't know who this is, and she came in the ring and started flipping, doing the spin like she did with Mizuki, where she's, like, whipping her around? Yeah. You think people would be like, oh, this is boring. You'd just, like, it'd mm. be quiet except for one person from the back there and be like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Who's oh, this I... lady? And it's like, oh, people will leave. People will go to that. I'm like, People are shitheads. They go to the bathroom. What's during the women's story? Anyway, no, don't get me started on that. What's anyway, the story to the match. I don't, I don't get it. What a weird guy. Uh, <laughs> I uh, wish Tokyo this Joshi... was cinema like the Bloodline. <laughs> all right, is that I all? I paid you have to so say, much sir? for this show to go, and I don't know why I'm not enjoying it. Anyway, Sendai Girls also has a show on June eighteenth. Where's Stardom? Yet? Oh my god! <laughs> Security, kick this guy out, please. Jesus Christ! That's okay. I'll see you guys at the hotel after the show. I brought my action figures. And Ice Ribbon Totoro Sasuke will defend the Ice Infinity title against Yappy um, on the eighteenth, and that's really all that's coming up in Joshi. 
Kelly? Hello. <laughs> As if the floor hasn't been yours the rest of the episode, <laughs> the floor is yours. Uh, go see Across the Spider-Verse. It's fucking great. If you haven't seen the first one, go watch the first one. It's fucking great. It's. I say this with no hyperbole. I think it'll be one of the single most influential movies of this generation when it comes to animation, just in terms of the amount of kids that I think are going to see that movie and think, man, I want to be an animator because it looks incredible. And this uh, across the spider verse is just as good as the first one. Can't recommend it enough. And supposedly they fixed the sound issues they were having. Oh, they were having sound issues? Did I didn't see, even know did about that. Did you see that? Yeah, some theaters, they were like, oh, the sound is terrible, and they like remastered the sound and sent it back out or something. Oh, huh, that's weird. That's wild that we're at a place in, where we can just update movies. And it's like, and fixed. Yeah, it's like when, uh, what was that, Cats, where you could see someone's watch <laughs> or something. Yeah, when Cats was fixed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, that was Kelly's Kelly's Little Corner. Kelly's movie corner uh, for the episode. So that is all for us. Next episode, we will be talking about stardom sunshine. Um, and who knows? I've been Kelly. I don't know. I'm sort of going off the rails here without you, but I don't know. Maybe we'll take some questions for next episode. I would love to take questions, some questions in a while. Um, and I think that would be fun. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If we do take questions, I'll send out a tweet on our Twitter account, jbobaudio. So follow us. Yeah. Or if you want, you can also join along with the conversation at the Voices of Wrestling Discord, where we have our Jumping Bomb Audio uh, channel there. So for Kelly, I am Taylor, and we will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Hello, do you like New Japan Pro Wrestling? Are you a Shin Nihon freak? If so, check out the Super Jcast with Joel and Damon on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. And even if you fucking hate New Japan Pro Wrestling, listen to the Super Jcast anyway. Not just for our great show reviews, analysis, and pastrami sandwiches, mm-hmm. but there's also usually some dick jokes somewhere in the obligatory opening 30 minutes of absolute nonsense we chat about every single week. That's the Super Jcast for all all the best talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling, crisps, and pornography. Hello there, my name's Neil David, and I'm the host of Euro Graps Express, the podcast exclusively dedicated to the wrestling of Europe. If it's wrestling, and it happens in Europe, and it's good, we talk about it. Whether it's RevPro, Progress, WXW, Passion Pro, Pro Wrestling Chaos, Pro Wrestling North, we don't care, we talk about them all. If it's good, and it's exciting, I want to share it with you. We're on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Check us out on the feed. Check us out on Twitter at Eurograps EXP. And join us for chat about European wrestling and a little bit of chat about cheese. Hopefully see you there.